if, just like what you were asking, uh, uh, the second one, the rate, rate two, uh, is RDS, why don't you tell me what that means about rate two? Is that a large or a small number? Small number, does that make sense? It's tiny. If it's, if it's slow, the rate is small. So if your grandma is driving on I-5, she's driving like 40 miles an hour. That rate is slow where you're driving like 85. So this is a small number. How about K2? Is that a large or small number? That's a small number also. So uh, basically what we're saying for slow step, that something slow, if rate, say, 7 is slow, K7 is tiny. If you had 20 different steps and 19 was slow, that means K19 is small. Does that make sense? So if that's tiny, let me plug this into this circled equation right here. Okay? If K2 is really tiny, what's going to happen here in this addition? That's basically non-existent. Does that make sense? Compared to K1 prime. So, for example, you know, if this is 1 and this is a billion, because it's much bigger, this is relatively nothing. We also did this when you did the weak acid assumptions in Chem 2B. Well, you probably forgot that. But we did the same thing when we were there as well, when we assumed something's really tiny. So, if I get rid of this because K2 is really tiny compared to K1 prime, note what happens. I will get rate 2. Uh, so, in other words, I'm saying up here, K2 is a lot smaller than K1 prime if it's a second step rate determining. You'll get K2 times K1 times H2 squared times NO squared all over K1 prime times H2O. Does that make sense? I just removed the smaller one. Where have you seen this before? Last answer. It was the last answer, yeah. So you can see how this one has built within it. You know, if you assume something's rate determining, it, the answer's already built in here. So this is a more exhaustive answer. Does that help answer your question? Yeah. Let's do one more because we're having so much fun with this. If the first step is the rate determining step, that means rate 1 is tiny, and so K1 uh, and K1 prime are tiny. Does that make sense? The forward and reverse reaction are much uh, slower for the first one. If, if this is the rate determining step, that means this is slow. So uh, how it's going to be practical to us here, K1 prime is a lot smaller than K2. So if you go back up to your original equation, if you're assuming the first step is rate determining, this one's going to be tiny and nearly non-existent or negligible. So let me rewrite that situation right now. Uh, if you do that, rate 2 is K2, K1. I'm going to rewrite the uh, numerator right now.
times 10 to the minus 5, you've got to keep those numbers and multiply. You can't drop something. So, okay. Okay. So in this case, it's the denominator, but it might not always be the denominator. Oh, and I forgot to square this. Okay, now let's simplify. <coughs> Rate 2 is K1, H2, NO squared. Where have you seen that before? It was the very first answer. So here, it doesn't matter which one is the rate determining step because this can uh, uh, has both answers within it. Okay? So this, uh, you can see, is the most exhaustive, most general way of solving a problem. Yeah? What's that? You're right. I, I mean, it's R2 because from the previous part, we have R2, so it's not going to say rate, but you'll have the same answer. So, so you're right. But I'm keeping that rate big. More generally, R2 represents the rate of production of the products. What are, what are they constrained by? Uh, and the rate of production of the products, if the first one is the rate determining step, comes down to the same answer either way you solve it. Okay, so uh, definitely the most general way of solving it. Still, I would just do the simplest way possible. If you know the slow step, use one of those methods.